The Myths of Islam Muslims often complain of the popular so-called misconceptions about their religion in the West. If you take a hard look, however, you'll find the most deeply held myths of Islam are the ones generated by Muslims and Western apologists. The only glaring exception to this is the misconception that all Muslims are alike. They aren't, but even Muslims fall into this trap as well, as evidenced by the various contrary factions insisting that they are the true Muslims, while those who disagree with them are either infidels, hijackers, or hypocrites. What is the first myth? Islam respects women as equals. The Quran places men and women on equal foundation before Allah. Each person is judged according to his or her own deeds. Women have equal rights under Islamic law. What is the truth? Merely stating that individuals will be judged as such by Allah does not mean that they have equal rights and roles, or they are judged by the same standards. There is no ambiguity in the Quran, the life of Muhammad, or Islamic law as to the inferiority of women to men despite the effort of modern-day apologists to make it look differently. After military conquests, Mohammed would dole out captured women as war prizes to his men. Captured women were made into sex slaves by the very men who killed their husbands and brothers. There are at least three Quranic verses in which Allah makes clear that a Muslim master has full sexual access to his female slaves yet there is not one that prohibits rape. The Quran gives Muslim men permission to beat their wives for disobedience. It plainly says that husbands are a degree above wives. The Hadith says the women are intellectually inferior and they comprise the majority of hell's occupants. Under Islamic law, a man may divorce his wife at the drop of a hat. If he does this twice, then he wishes to remarry her that she must first have sex with another man. Men are exempt from such degradations. Muslim women are not free to marry whomever they please as are Muslim men. Their husband might bring other wives into the marriage bed. She must be sexually available to him at all times as a field ready to be tilled according to the so-called holy book of Islam. Muslim women do not inherit property in equal portions to males. Their testimony in court is considered to be worth one half that of a man. Unlike a man, she must cover her head and often her face. Given all of this, it's quite a stretch to say that men and women have equality under Islam, based on obscure theological analogies or comparisons. This is an entirely new stratagem that is designed to appeal to modern taste but is in sharp disagreement with the reality of Islamic law and history. In the following video clip, a Kurdish author who lives in Norway, he had to flee his home country after receiving death threats from Islamists, will analyze the Surah 434. Here it is. <laughs> It is written in Quran. الرجال قوامون على النساء بما فضل الله بعضهم على بعض وبما أنفقوا من أموالهم فالصالحات قانتات حافظات للغيب بما حفظ الله واللاتي تخافون نشوزهن فعظهن وهجروهن في المضاجع واضربوهن فإن أطعنكم فلا تبغوا عليهن سبيلا أم آيتا أم ما نكيتي. The verse means. بيوان لجنان بالا دسترن هبة هي بترن. Men are powerful and they are over women. أمش بهوي أو هو يكخوا رئيسي لبيوان كزيا تلقرتوا تالجنك. The reason is that God has respected men more than women. And God mentions the reasons why this respect goes more to men. According to the first, the first reason is that because men have properties. And because of that, they of course afford the necessities of the house. 
بوچی جنانیش خوار رزی لینه ناون and why women are not respected by God because they do not have properties and they cannot afford and pay for the necessities these are just simple words in the verse itself it continues also the best women are که همیشه ملکش و یرایلی مرد کنیم. Who are always obedient to their husbands or men. لکاتی که کمرد کنیم لمال و نین. When the men are out of the house. ام جنانا لگل پیاوی ترق سنکن. These women cannot talk to other men. باشیش تیلا بلای سیکسی اولا اولا نکن. Not to talk to other topics like sex. زینا نکن کاملا گلم شدنا. Not to زینا which is an Arabic word to adultery. Adultery, yeah, adultery. انجا هر دعات کا خوان سیحتی پیوان دکات پیان آره. And in the same verse, God advises men. ای پیوان. You men. او آفرتانی. The women who are disobedient to you, the word which means disobedient and rebel here, the word uses for for animals like for example when a horse goes from its. لذلك أجر جينيك بالدستي تقوى برلاب وياخيب وبلسبو. The same term is used for men for the relation between men and women. So the women are like animals to men. بيان على يكم. That's why they tell them to first. أنا مش قاري كي ترسنا يمكن هرشان يمكن. Advise your wives or threaten them strictly. Sex يعني قل ما كانوا لجيك دور كونوا. Don't make sex with them and expel them from your bed. اگر چاق نبون لیانن. If they didn't obey later, beat them. بالام اگر آن امانه آن کل دو باش بو یا وش باش بو. But if they didn't do these things and they have been obedient, so be good with them. ولا بد أن نعلم أن الضرب عقوبة شرعية لا يملك إنسان أن ينكره لأن الذي شرعه هو الذي خلق هذا الإنسان هو لا شك أن الضرب هو يعتبر وسيلة من وسائل الإصلاح قال لي أنا ماني جاي أضربك أنا جاي أقتلك ومسك في رقبتي وسدحني على الأرض وبدأ يخنق فيها بنظرات يعني They might go to the mosque every prayer. They might pray their five prayers on time. They go to Hajj, and I swear to you that there was this very professional sister on that radio show. And she was saying, I work, and she is, by the way, the wife of a big scholar. She's not someone, we don't get just people from the street. And she said, these men, go, they, they pray. They're pious brothers. They go to Hajj. They do all of those things, but they abuse their wives at home. Algeria adopted a family code that restricts women's rights in marriage by providing for polygamy, mandating wife obedience, and restricting grounds for divorce for women. The parliament debated for days as to how long the stick with which a man was allowed to beat his wife uh, should be. Uh, um, the penal code in Algeria, for instance, um, permits husbands to use physical violence to chastise their wives as long as it does not result in grievous harm, which is defined as loss of sight, hearing, power of speech, facial disfigurement, or other life-threatening injuries. It is obvious the Quran verse 434 is a challenge to Muslim apologists. 
Translators working independently and many years apart came to the same conclusion concerning this appalling verse, that he permits husband to hit their disobedient wife, wives in the case of polygamists up to four women per man. I've had some Muslim trying to justify this verse of the Quran by saying that a man may hit his wife as long as he doesn't leave any bruises or marks or breaks any bones. What kind of justification is this? Is, this is ridiculous.